And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Tuesday, February the 7th, 2022. While those that were looking for clarity today, it was fleeting at best. Waiting until Jerome Powell got started on his, it wasn't a press conference, he was just speaking. And the market went in both directions. It ultimately chose to take Jerome Powell for his word and decline as the bonds declined and the dollar rallied. So all of that was in line with what I believe people were feeling was the correct path for the market, given the information that we have at hand right now. Then the market decided differently and decided no, and just turned off of, I will say, major levels where there were large, what large people believe be institutional or just large traders had resting orders to buy. And the S&P came down twice, cleared it out. And then after that second time, they just started to rally it. And then they didn't look back and they just kept going. And one thing forces the next, forces the next, as our, uh, the market swings back in favor of uh, tech, basically. And in all honesty, it was it was interesting because I felt that there were, it was institutional money later in the day coming in to the likes of Apple, uh, Google, Meta, Microsoft, heavy in Microsoft. And these are also the stocks where I saw greater volumes. And for example, Apple, 83 million. Often Apple's doing like between 35 million, 40 million, up to 50 million. So this is a little bit on the heavy side, 83. You know, that's good volume. It's heavy volume for Apple. Um, Amazon, this has been their average lately. Uh, so I didn't see anything particularly outrageous there. Google was active, normally is in between the 9 and 12 million. So there was 48. So I believe institutions coming in and buying it. So you're know, forcing, it's like they're, they're taking positions. Apple, same deal. Um, going further down the list, Microsoft. Normally Microsoft is like five, seven, maybe 10 on a really heavy day, 50, 50 million. They were moving in and they came in later in the afternoon with heavy, heavy volume right there. So NVIDIA actually average, but NVIDIA it catches fire, it'll lose, it'll lose its steam, it catches fire. Tesla, again, 185 million. So but how much of Tesla is actually just where the options are actually trading? So there's just a lot of um, high frequency traders and just, just a lot of trading going on option wise, it gets converted into stock. But institutionally, I think I saw the best today was in Microsoft. So institutionally, there are a lot of people that have either listened or had a had conversations with Microsoft or have gotten some research that is like, yep, we'll take a position and they are putting some money in there and along with Apple. So being that I believe is probably longer term and for for whatever I know, I could probably go look at the options and see, okay, you took a position in the stock and you have an options position at the same time. So again, I don't know any of that. These are just my observations for today. Now taking it back to the count, what does that really kind of tell me when I see? Because all of that is taking place on the back of knowing that interest rates are going to go higher knowing that the dollar is likely going to move higher because basically folks it did hold it's still holding above 103 and don't forget before it was having trouble getting back above 101 so that part's still there bonds did continue to come off uh, into the afternoon and uh, ended down closer to their lows into the highs so interesting day in terms of really what should we be doing in equities we shouldn't have been rallying as strong as we did with the Dow being up 265, with the NASDAQ 100 being up uh, 263, with the Russell uh, you know, being higher, et cetera, et cetera. But they did. 
and in many places. So again, what what I try to to suss out here is how much of this rally is actually being is being held accountable towards four five mega tech tech stocks tech companies. Yes, there are others that are participating, of course, because they're they're in the space and they provide something along the way. So with that happening, this is typical market action. Now, I have to rebate it back to account now. I'm going to be technical about it versus that was all kind of the fundamental side when we're talking about uh, you know interest rates and how that's going to affect the company and company earnings, et cetera. So that's the fundamental side. The technical side continues to say, gee, rearrange and talk about what's going on because if I have to leave this count as is, there's several ways I actually can count it. I don't want to start breaking that down today. That is more of a podcast versus just an LEO wave update, but it is also an LEO wave update. I mean, there are several ways I can drop this all down and consider this a the, the intermediate wave A, this would be intermediate wave B, and this would then turn into one, two, three, four, five for intermediate wave C. Now, I'll tell you what counts better, and that's exactly the way I have it. So both would carry the same prognosis for coming off, but this fits more, and I'll tell you why. If I get an ABC X wave doing a double ABC, that puts us in a B wave. Now I can look at the characteristics of a B wave. B waves are just kind of these wonders. They're just like go totally against the grain. And I mean totally against the grain. Like the market's going up and you're wondering why? When everything else is pointing to like, you should not be doing this. We should be preparing. We should be pulling money in and putting it in our pockets and keeping it there because we're going to need it, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, th that's the underlying reality. But here we are. And, you know, and here we go because it continues to point higher. Now, again, starting here with the S&P, with that in mind, that we're still in this B wave, because it became apparent that this afternoon, they were still interested in still buying more. So whether they're just buying because this, this is the time they're all going to position, and they're going to hold it through this whole period of time, because whatever Microsoft is working on, they're going to basically corner and so you may have to wait for that all to come to fruition and therefore then Microsoft being worth maybe $500. And I'm pleased, I cannot be, that's not held folks. That's just me throwing out a number. Say, But for example, there is out there still to come a the next economic expansion. And what that will look like is beyond me because A, of all of the technology that's going to propel it and take it there. Much of what we deal with today will not exist. Gas-powered automobiles likely aren't going to be around, right? Because we'll be just we won't be around. We'll destroy the planet in the in the process. So a lot of things going on that are getting placed. But here we are back today in the reality of getting to tomorrow and next week and next month, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not in, but I'm not in that mode of like, well, I'm investing for the future. No, I'm investing for today and tomorrow. <clears throat> or I'm investing for a period of it's going to get tough type stuff. In that with mind, a B wave, the personality of B wave fits so perfectly. This market actually from this entire rally, actually all of it has been against the grain. And it's fighting. And you can see it. These patterns in terms of being impulse type are are not nice they're not right and i was going to use a different word and i won't but in any case a b c we're still in it we're forming an intermediate b wave we still have additional i'm going to start building out these fibs which remain valid and they did and they have so i have continued to hold these valid and not count this out until I can count five down. One more time, I'm going to bring this down. Let's go to the one hour. There's not a way on God's green earth that this is anywhere near whatever a five wave should look like. So if anything, three, four, 
and four ends there. I mean, this is it is truly it is truly bizarre times as a trader when you're sitting there and you're watching this. It's like this is a lot of money being tossed into the market, a lot. Right? You have to consider that. Consider all you got to do, folks. You want to find out the dollar value? Just just take even a VWAP. So you're gonna to have to figure out VWAP, what VWAP was for Microsoft today. But just just for the exercise, take 50 million, 50 and a half million, and times that by let's just say 265 or 260, yeah, 265. We'll give it a little bit of a valuated. But even if you do that, that's the dollar equivalent of what traded in Microsoft stock, and it does not include derivatives. So money is pouring all over the place. So if I look at the hourly chart and the S&P, I can go three and I can go four, and this is one, two, and we're inside a third, because that's how it took off, and it did not stop, and it did not care. This started to rally, and Powell was still chatting somewhere. I didn't care. They did not care. They picked their point that was good enough for them, and they went in. Now, where does that leave us? Like I've been saying, until I can count five down, we're still going up. And now I've just made it. I made the adjustment. Again, go pull out to the four. I made the adjustment in the wave three. But guess what? It clears up a lot of problems we all had. Like, what was this compared to that? Couldn't be three. It overlapped here. This overlapped there, et cetera. Clean it up. It's all a part of wave three. Ugly as it is, I will tell you, ugly as it is, it's going to be a wave three, and there's the four, and now we're in the five. Now, you may have come up with that, that reasoning. I have held it open for weeks. And as long as the market, and I continue to say it's not me, and it certainly isn't some other person sitting out somewhere else, who's got the magic touch. It's the collective. And the collective is the market. It's when JP Morgan or Morgan Stanley or Bank of America or Wells Fargo, and they all collectively say, yep, we all love Microsoft. I'm going first. And then they just kind of start one by one. And here comes everybody else. And then their, their advisors are telling their customers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you get 50 million shares trading. All right. So now let's start to wind this down even more. I'm going to go to the four-hour chart, and I'm going to open it up a little bit because now we have anchors and we can look at that fifth wave again. I'm going to go to the three. And this is actually also an exercise in extensions upon extensions. And nobody's wrong and nobody's right. It's just the way it is. And it's having the ability to make the adjustment and call it and see why and be able to notice what's creating it. And it's not broad-based. It may appear it on my chart because there's a lot of green, but it's not broad-based. Now, as soon as I say this, you see they open down. So don't be surprised if we come in and they've knocked it all the way back, back down here because reality comes walking through the door. But here are, for wave five, back down to the hourly so I can take a look. Right now, we got 41.90, which we've already hit. We come back down, pull back a little bit. We should go back up because I don't think the third wave is over yet. We should break back above. And we're dang close. 42.07. Next up will be 4250, 4267, 4293, 4321 to 4340. And I want to take a peek because I really don't want to get above 4327. So 4321, okay. 43, 43 above that? No. I don't, I, I don't want to see the B wave. You trash in the top of the X-ray. So, and if I had this a different count and this was still a one or that a two, the two would not be able to break above that. It would be breaking above this level, the uh, one. So I'm going to hold to that 
but it has plenty of room to put in a five and then die. But it makes this tire, this then structure, more of a flat, right? There's the low of A, there's the high of B, there's the low of C would be expected to come in back here, maybe a little bit more down here. So we are continuing to look at what I hear from a lot of institutions, how they're evaluating the S&P, and they're calling for like 32. They consider value at 3,200. And I would imagine if we went further out, there's a lot of markers being put down to 32 on the uh, and the longer term dated options. So what can we start to look for? Again, I felt it today only being Tuesday, but we have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then don't forget, we have all of next week because that's the monthly expiration. So again, remember, a lot of this is swirling around derivatives and when those derivatives expire and at what level they expire and how manipulative can the market be to get to where it wants. That's kind of what's at play. We're, again, Microsoft, institutional money, but they could all change their mind in a week and a half for all I know. Um, you know, it's all about positions and what you have on and, and rotation, et cetera, et cetera. That's all trading. And so that's really kind of what it's breaking down to be. And then in the meantime, we got to work this stuff out. So right now I am, I am feeling and saying that in the face of the reality, what the real picture is telling me that we shouldn't really go above 4328, right? With that high being 4327. So 28, that's starting to break it. So a little bit, yes. A lot, no. Um, so again, that would leave us then with a C wave down. And that's a daily chart. Doesn't It looks pretty harmless. Even the four-hour chart begins to look a little bit better because what we're looking at is wherever this tops out, we're looking for it to come back down to there. That's the start of the whole thing. So the flat would be back down at 3,500. That then may only be just the primary degree. And then we have a primary degree B and then a primary C down. And that just becomes cycle A. So this is going to take a lot longer. And the market, sure. Not that they're aware, but they're just doing what they do. And if we fit it into the count, the count's telling us it's going to take a lot longer, simply because the moves, like I've, I've talked before, it's like you have to be careful about falling into the trap of counting too fast. When you figure that it's been 90 years to get from here in the S&P, from that low to the high, right? The low being like $4.36 and the high being 4808 that took a long time. Why would we think that a year covers it? We're done. Let's get back to business. We are getting back to business. So my other point is, we just have to make adjustments of how we trade, what our timeframes are, and getting in and actually doing it. Because there is still a ton of money to be made. It's all running around. So you can trade it. Now, quickly, moving averages, kind of sprung back to life. We can go back down to that hourly real quick here in the S&P. And you can see it came down, smacked the, just gave a little, little smack and a kiss to the hourly 200. And then boom, went right back off of it. And there were a lot, there was a lot of um, inventory. A lot of contracts changed hands at 4,100, by the way, today. So it was resting place several times during the day. And each time, bing, bing. Okay. So everything's still pretty much looking like go up, go up. And now we have our upside targets, which I've already given over in the NASDAQ. It really is the same thing. Same play. I'm not going to go into it. I've already told you. We've gone over the individual stocks. Um, but here, three and the fours over here. Uh, activate, put him over here. Let's put it down there just to be safe. And the three goes over here. Same story. Nice, big wave three. And again, I'm not necessarily changing 
uh, the direction of what's going on. It's all extending. And if you think that Elliot can see, oh, that's going to extend, then it's like, no, the market tells you. Do you think the market saw it? No. But that was the order flow. And that's where it went. Market's always going to be searching for value, but it's got to find it in this blackness. So it probes in both directions. So one, two, three, beautiful, big, huge, nasty in the middle, three. Then a four, and now we're going to come down and we're looking at a wave five, finally. Again, but again, this bizarre beyond words. This bizarre beyond words. Even if I take it down to just the line chart, it's one, two, and we're in that three, and then it's one, two, and it should just keep going. It really should. But if I was there, I'd be like, I'm not going to buy it. I'd want to be doing options against it. I, I want to be to be pairing this off with as much as I can get my hands on. Um, because it's going to be wild and crazy along the way. Now, let's go back out to that four hour. Let me go back out to the candle. Let's start adding our fibs. Uh, actually, let me go out one more to the daily. So we're going to first just put, actually, that's going to be the C wave down, and we want the A wave, we want the C wave up. First thing I'm going to, oops, I'm going to get rid of that. There to there to there. Okay, so this is just, we've had these for a while. So basically, <laughs> excuse me, talk too much, my throat gets dry. Um, we've already been up to 12,950, and I did that, I believe we will revisit. So even though that this is higher, lower high, lower high, I think they will finally, they will get broken because it was really putting in a fourth wave after the third and it got chopped. Now, so daily, we should continue to move higher. What we have up, 13,050. So up another hundred over what we've already seen, not bad. But that now comes into the picture. And again, it depends on how you trade and what you trade. But I keep I keep trying to say, and I'm not trying to be a jerk, that it, when you're trading, you have to be as fluid as the market is. So that means you have to be able to just go and go with the with the flow in terms of they're buying it, you buy with, and then you get out. You take your money and you move. But if that's not your style of trading and you can't trade that way, simply because maybe you're at a job, so you can't watch your trade. There are, there are other things, but you're going to have to be looking at defined risk spreads. I think that we're into a very risky time in the market that just buying something and waiting or selling something and waiting can be very, very costly. And so depending on your account size, it just really makes a difference about how you and where you put your money. But it's not impossible. And there's a lot of things to trade. So having said all of that, um, these moves during the day are great. And I want to start to narrow this down. So we're going to come down to the four hour and open that up because what the next layer that I want to add on, if indeed we are in this minute fifth wave up to complete the minor wave C, and then on top of that, an intermediate wave B, then we'll start a C wave down and complete primary wave A. So this is pulling this whole thing out, but it's just a much longer period of time. So get used to counting ABCs because they're going to be with us for a while. Now, from here, I'm going to get the FIB extensions for a fifth wave. And for that, we start at the beginning of where wave three began, to the top of wave three, to the bottom of wave four. So what does that tell us? Well, right now we got a double. We got a double of where the C wave <clears throat> would be 1.382, 1 138.2% of wave A. And that comes in at 13,331. So it's 
3,330 all the way up to, or actually 13,300 to 13,331, somewhere in there. And that's a double. Then we have 13,558. And then you got a big one up here, but I don't, I don't think, I don't really want it to come up there. I do believe we've already surpassed the other next one is kind of right there. 12,976 to 13,050. That actually fits pretty cleanly. And that would be the four. And if this is, we've already done the one and the two or in the three, the four and the five. Yeah, that would create a new high, which we want to see create a new high by 100 points, which works. And bring us somewhere up around 13,100, maybe above. That fifth wave should be over. And again, I'm not going to go repeating everything that I said that while I was doing the S&P because it remains valid for the NASDAQ, of course. So, but the reality and what's really happening and the economy and interest rates, that's not going to stop just because certain things are happening within Microsoft and these other stocks. That's not going to stop. People are going to continue to work, by the way. So people are going to continue to work on, on artificial intelligence pro pro uh, projects. We're going to, yeah, we will all kind of get through this. It's going to be difficult at times, but we'll get through it. And the training is going to be wild and woolly. So, oh, there's our markers. Downside, now this goes for both S&P and the NASDAQ. If they just start turning this around, it's always going to be the same story until we get five waves down on the hourly charts. And right now, today's activity broke that, smashed it into smithereens by doing that which is why I think we go up at least to above 12,950 before we turn lower. Hard. Because from here, I'm not sure what I would think. And that's a being honest answer. From here, it would be a gigantic failure of some kind. Because it really needs to get up and do that, according to the count. And this has been pretty, like, that was a pretty bullish turn. So there you have it. Moving averages. Looking pretty good here on the hourly in, in alignment. This turned higher. So anything to the downside, if it's not corrective, it needs to go and it needs to go fast. Like that went pretty fast. So that was given a pretty good hint. Like, yep, looks like it's done. And then it breaks, stop, boom. And it's pretty much what it felt like too. And we'd have to break all of that. All right, I'm going to leave it all right there. Tomorrow, we don't have any Fed governors to listen to. Let me see what we've got economically. Nothing. Whole lot of nothing. Left to our own devices, I would think that we buy. That's going to be. And if you're a day trader and you're trading the future, I know. Pick your points. All right. Have a great trading day tomorrow. Next update will be on Wednesday, February the 8th.